neurological pinched nerves in the, in the neck and the cervical region sometimes can travel all the way down the arm, sometimes just into the shoulder. But those are signs that you need to get into your chiropractor to have that corrected because nobody else corrects that. Okay, so we just had Seth here on traction. Seth suffers from a, a really uh, debilitating, unique issue. Um, and we'll get right to it. Can we, Seth? Yeah. Okay. Seth has a disc herniation in his lower back. This is what I've diagnosed him as having. We sent him out for an MRI. He got that yesterday, waiting for the results. But um, he has um, severe sharp pain that shoots into his groin, his testicle, and he has impotence. Um, so as you can imagine, that's uh, hard for a young guy to go through that. So we're helping him here. We put him on some traction. And now we're gonna do a technique called Cox Flexion Distraction. And we have, uh, kind of have a, everybody watching here, uh, we have some support for him, but also we have someone else here that has a disc herniation and a fissure, a disc fissure, and that's like a crack in the outer layer of the disc. So she's just kind of watching to see what Cox flexion distraction technique is all about. Again, we just had him on 10 minutes of traction, of decompression. But for her, we need to be very careful about putting her on decompression or traction because she has a fissure. And uh, in her situation, it could aggravate it. Uh, it's sort of a 50-50 there with that, with disc fissure. So we'll have to go slow with you on that. He is not suffering from a disc fissure, but he's suffering from a, a, enough of his own issues here with his spine. So we're gonna show you how we do that. Um, this is not a Cox table. Uh, we have one next door. Um, I just have the camera set up in this room, so we're gonna do it in this room. Um, next time I'll show you on the Cox table. Uh, and I will admit the Cox table is a little bit smoother um, than this one, but my Cox table needs to be repaired. There's something not working quite quite right with it. Okay. So I know um, where his disc problems are based on examination, but we're going to place our hand higher up here, and it's just a forward motion like this. And what this does is it separates the spinal segments and allows the disc material to suck back into its space. It almost acts like a vacuum. And when we do this gentle pumping motion, it helps to not only take pressure off the spinal canal, so if you have stenosis, spinal canal stenosis, or stenosis of the nerve, even the sciatic nerve, uh, which you have, in uh, on both the right and the left but it's only um symptomatic right now on your right side correct mm -hmm. yeah and just do this gentle pumping motion now what we've done with uh seth here is done some cold laser therapy we're pulling out all the stops because we need the disc to heal fast the cells to regenerate and for him to get this strength back. And this is about as low as we go. Until I get that MRI report, I want to see exactly what's going on with every single disc in his lower back. Any pain down your leg at all? Yeah. Hmm? No. Are you having any increase in pain down your leg? No. No, okay. So you want to make sure they're not having an increase in pain down the leg, but you said that you had some pain down your leg, or was it across your lower back? My lower back. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so there's protocols that we go by. He's already passed certain protocols. So um, again, you do not want to have pain shooting down your leg while this treatment is happening. And that's why it's important to um, have this done by a certified Cox Flexion Distraction Technique Doc. There are a lot of docs that have these tables. That doesn't mean they're certified in it. How you doing there, okay? Okay. So we did a little bit of that, and then again, I like to 
use cold laser therapy for him. So you have to have everyone wearing glasses. And if it's fogging up, put your glasses over the mask. So then I'm going to go over the nerve roots here. Are you having any pain now, by the way? Uh, just in my lower back on the left side. Still. On the left side? Okay. And any improvement? Yeah, a lot of improvement. I haven't really been feeling too many spasms anymore and stuff like that. Say that a little bit louder? I haven't been feeling too many spasms anymore in my legs or like just in my arms really. Okay. So he's saying now that he's uh, he also had some neck issues down into the arm that he's uh, not having the spasms into his arms and his legs anymore, not as much pain, is that what you said also? Exactly. Okay, how much improvement would you say? 30, 40, 50 I'd percent about, or? I'd say about 40. 40 percent, and today's our what, third adjustment? Yeah, third. Our third adjustment. So he's making progress for three adjustments. That's pretty good. He'll be fine, we'll get him through this, but the big test is the impotence. And that's, I think, that's, that's what I really want to help him with. And I know that I can help him with the back pain and the neck pain and the spasms and the pain shooting down the leg and tingling in the foot and into the arm. That's not my concern. Uh, my concern is the, uh, the impotence. And uh, hopefully we can get full resolution of that and hopefully we'll follow up with another video um, with that and kind of just follow up with him and see how he's doing in a couple weeks from now because we just we're just getting started today's uh, I think our adjustment number four so it's hard to talk and mm -hmm. breathe with this mask on <laughs> okay so with this laser it's great it's a 50 watt laser mm -hmm. and um, you know, I, I put it on the spot for about 60 seconds, 90 at the most, but we have rental lasers now and those aren't as powerful, but if he holds it on there for three minutes, he'll have the same effect. It just takes, okay. the treatment times are longer. But this helps to inhibit nerves, reduce muscle spasms, mm -hmm. and reduce pain. Uh, and it's really effective. And we're also going to go, are you tender in there at all? Yeah, right there. Yeah. There? So I'll show you, uh, on a scale of one to five, five being the most sensitive, what is that on a one to five scale? Five, four. Okay. Yeah, four. Four, okay, so he gives them both the four. So we're gonna laser those spots, and then we'll check afterwards. See if he still gives it a four. Okay, again, this spot right there, a four. Okay. We're going to leave it on there for one minute. This laser is just amazing when it comes to just melting away trigger points. It'll do the same thing across the shoulder, into the back of the neck, the back, really anywhere. Anywhere in the mid back. Also, IT band, which people get a lot, right? Especially people we scan your feet, right? Yeah. People that lean to the outside of their feet on the lateral arches mm. often have tight IT bands. Okay, almost done here. 20 more seconds. And then we're going to test that trigger point again. that now? It's like a zero. Yeah, I'm pushing just as hard. So as you can see this is very effective and it does so much more than just alleviating muscle spasms. Okay. No pain into your legs, correct? No, no increase in pain or no. No pain at all in your legs, correct? 
No. glasses off. You just put them right over there. Now a lot of times people will go to a orthopedist or orthopedic surgeon and they're either going to do injections, especially if it's a really bad disc case with shooting pain or radiculitis or neurological case like yourself. Um, and oftentimes we'll either get injections or physical therapy. Physical therapy is the study of muscles. It's not the study of discs nerves and that's what chiropractors do and any doctor that sends a, a neurological case a back neurological case to a pt is just taking the wrong approach it's taking a cookie cutter approach and is not reading the latest research and it's just going on biases that he has towards chiropractors which are just unfounded and stupid at this point it's just so um, if they read the literature, they would know better. And a lot of people get the same approach to doing it. I don't know if you've gotten the physical therapy script yet. Did they give that to you yet? Uh, exercises, you mean? Or physical therapy, yeah. Yeah. Th yeah. They gave you the script already, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So physical therapy is great, but you have to take pressure off the disc. You gotta let that disc heal first. And that's what chiropractors do. And then after that, by all means, physical therapy is absolutely great. But you can't put the cart before the horse. You gotta start with the chiropractic, especially if it's you're having neurological symptoms, symptoms into your legs, into your groin, you know, into your, in this case, genitals, or for you, into your, your feet and your legs. You're having sciatic nerve pain, severe sciatic nerve pain. Um, so that's my take. I hope if anybody's watching this video that they learn from that, that most doctors are going to give you that physical therapy prescription. And it doesn't mean it's the best approach. Um, granted, if you had surgery and you need to strengthen a joint, absolutely, physical therapy is great for that and great for a lot of things. Now, his hips are out of alignment. So we use a gentle approach. Sometimes we put people on their side and for all of you have seen that kind of adjustment, but for him, we're waiting on his MRI to come back. So we're gonna do a Thompson technique where the piece table pops up. And you can see here, his legs are pretty even here. First few times he came in, that wasn't the case. But when I bend his legs here, you see how this left one bends further mm -hmm. than the right one? See that? Yeah. So if I were to even him out, that's a lot of pressure on your right leg, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I have to really force it to do that. So that tells me his pelvis is pulled back on this side. And that's been his pattern the last three adjustments, except when he first came in, this leg was short. Now it's, it's level. So at least that's better. So we're just going to adjust them this way here. And then when we get his MRI results, probably by tonight or tomorrow, we may adjust this, adjust him a little differently. So 
him now because a lot of people sit down. He's sensitive. Are you sensitive right there? Yeah. yeah. So that's the L5-S1 junction right there. And people that sit all day are very sensitive here because it puts L5-S1 into hyperextension, also called facet syndrome, right here. And very common with people with disc injuries, disc degeneration, disc herniations and bulges. And people that sit down all day, which is everybody now. Yeah. Um, even if you're working from home, it's probably not, your home chair probably isn't, if you live in New York City, as comfortable as your work chair. Um, maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but uh, your ergonomic setup probably isn't the same. So, this is common to see this with people that have sit down jobs. Okay, now, watch, we're gonna bend his legs. That's better. Still a little bit tight on this, you feel that? Yeah, a little it's bit. Still, his quad is a little tight here. I can feel a tiny bit, but, but now it's, it's even, right? Okay. Cool, right, you see that? Yeah. So, um, and I'm pushing evenly on both sides here. This one, again, is resisting me just a little bit. Okay. So. When you sit a lot, what do you tight, what, are, what muscle tightens? Your hip flexors and your quads. And those are some of the tightest muscles in the human body. So if you sit a lot, stand up and do this runner's stretch and do a, a lunge stretch, that's something you can do, especially spending a little more time on your right quad, okay? I'm gonna have you turn over on, uh, actually before you turn over, I want you to keep your legs straight. Raise one leg as high as you can. So now we're checking for his sacrum. Okay, and the other one. Okay. Is one leg harder to raise than the other? This one. Yeah, and you saw it didn't go up, it was, I don't know, a couple of inches, not, uh, this one went up a couple inches higher. So cross this ankle over here. So that tells me his sacrum is rotated. So we're just gonna, Correct that here, relax here. Okay, uncross them. Now try to raise them up one at a time. Okay. Okay, how did that feel? Probably. Okay, try to do that a little bit slower though. Go ahead. All right, the other one. Okay, that was better. Was that easier for you on that right side? Yeah, way easier. There you go. Okay. So now, so he's a little twisted up here. You could feel the left, the muscles on the left here are in spasm. Deep breath in and out. When you go home, you can use the lacrosse ball through here. Okay. Can I give you one? I don't have one. What's that? I don't have one. Okay, good. Okay, turn over on your back. And slide down just a little bit for me. Okay. Cross your arms in front of you. Mm -hmm. Tuck your chin down. All right, take a deep breath in. Keep that chin tucked and blow all the way out. Good. All right. Mm -hmm. So another thing, uh, he has some stomach issues and hands up. So we just adjusted um, 
area where the diaphragm is, uh, where the stomach is. Um, but his stomach issues, I think, are more related to the things, the food that he's eating. So we just we gave you that diet diary. Yeah. So he's working on that to fill out the diet diary. We'll take a closer look at that next week, okay? Make sure you're filling that out every day and make, make sure you're putting in all those snacks. Are you a snacker? I like eating watermelon. Grapes. Okay, so healthy snacks. All right, so put them in though, you know. Even the unhealthy ones, don't forget the unhealthy ones. Put it all in that, that little diet diary I gave you. Okay, and... What kind of neck issues were you having? Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about the issues you were having with your neck and your arm? Um, I had pain on the left side of my neck. Uh, in the back, and it was kind of just shooting down to my arm, and I felt like tingling and stuff like that in my hands uh -huh. for a while. Um, and then slowly, as time went on, I guess it just like stopped, but the pain in my neck never really stopped. It just kind of went into my shoulder and came back to my neck and just shoot down to the back. Stayed the there, okay. Have you had any tingling in your hands at all in the last? Uh... No, not at all. Okay, and how long has it been since you had tingling in your hands? Um, probably like. Okay, so that was an old symptom you had. Now it's just right into the shoulder. Yeah. Okay. So neurological pinched nerves in the, in the neck, in the cervical region, sometimes can travel all the way down the arm, sometimes just into the shoulder. But those are signs that you need to get into your chiropractor to have that corrected because nobody else corrects that. Um, PT will help you with the muscles in the neck and joint, which will help but nobody will check the alignment of the spine like a chiropractor. It's just, it's just how it is. There's, uh, you might get lucky and find a physical therapist that does that. It's possible, but relax yourself here. up. Okay, now lay on, uh, shooting out to the left side of your lower back. So left side facing up. Nope. Face the wall. Yep. All right, you're going to take this leg and touch, the, yeah, with your toe and then bring it back. Go ahead. And you're going to support yourself there. Good. Okay. Good. Is that sore there? A little bit. Almost done. A little faster. Good. Okay. Now, I want you to sit and face the camera yeah. okay now you're going to cross your arms in front of you good and you're going to go from this motion to that from this motion to that okay go ahead Set.